everybody, it's your buddy, it's your pal, Smash Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here to talk about next week's NXT show, NXT Vengeance Day, and it's not TakeOver, and it's not a pay-per-view, and it's a weekly episode, so it's a halfway between whatever they're calling a pay-per-view now and a weekly show, so expectations are measured, to say the very, very least. Um, we've got matches. We've got other stuff to talk about as well. I do like coming up here to preview stuff with you guys, because I'm not reviewing NXT every week anymore, as you guys know, but it does give me a chance to sort of talk about what's particularly going on at the moment. And what's going on at the moment is... Yeah, Vengeance Day is next week. It's a loose takeoff of St. Valentine's Day Massacre. It's a loose takeoff of WWE Vengeance. It's a loose takeoff of a lot of things, and it's an elevated episode of NXT, just like we get in AEW as well. First and foremost, and uh, you guys will know that listen to me for a long time when, it's, when it was me and Jake doing these things, always start off with what's not on the show. And the big, the big thing sticking out to me this week is who's not on the show as far as just who I'm enjoying. And the biggest name, because the other two names are actually going to be involved in a segment, so we'll get to that in a second. The biggest name that I can't believe is not on this show is Solo Sokoa. Now, for those of you that are still watching NXT, and yes, I know the numbers are dwindling, and yes, it's on sci-fi, so the numbers are going to dwindle even more. One of the people that really sticks out to me um, is Solo Sokoa, because the guy looks like he's main event ready, the guy looks like you could plop him out and put him into the bloodline tomorrow and he would fit right in, but he's the least goofy character on what is still very much a goofy show now. And he just went through his thing with Boa. And Boa's interesting, too. I'd like to see what they're going to do with Boa, because he's the latest fiend character, the dual personality, sort of a better version of what they're doing with Damian Priest on Raw right now. Um, so, it, yeah, it's a bummer, because Solo Sokoa is one of the few people I actually pay attention to on the show isn't that sad. Now, the other two people that don't have matches on next week's show, on Vengeance Day, is L.A. Knight and Grayson Waller. Now, Grayson Waller coming off of, I guess, the little bit of a push that he got from working with AJ Styles. The match that they had was great. The fact that it got Grayson Waller on Raw twice when he's barely been in NXT was kind of cool. And L.A. Knight is, is fucking awesome. He's white rock, and I'm sorry, I know that sounds really problematic, but it is, and it's just, he's a dick. He is, he's NXT's male Britt Baker, if that makes any sense at all. The more he leans into being a dickhead and being a heel, the more people like him, and he, he's got that, uh, that whole, the, the slang and the way that he talks, is that's just a fact of life, yeah, I, I shouldn't do that ever, sorry to the earphone listeners, but here's the deal. Grayson Waller has a, a uh, restraining order against LA Knight because that's one of those things that exists in wrestling and it's just one of those, how do you have a restraining order, you guys work in the same building, whatever. Grayson Waller also has his new, his new heavy, his new diesel in, in the form of Sangha who's got a magnificent mustache, does he not? But the, uh, the idea was this past week that if LA Knight uh, were to beat Sangha in his debut on NXT, um, they would consider, that he would consider removing the restraining order. So as soon as he beat Sangha, he beat the shit out of Grayson Waller. And now Grayson Waller has, has promised to press charges and have LA Knight arrested next week. Now, it's, it's, it's three in one here, because first of all, the idea of a restraining order in wrestling is, is fantastic. It's like the, um, when they're trying to sell a big match leading up to a pay-per-view and they say, oh, the competitors can't touch each other, and then somebody gets bumped into somebody and that throws everything all into, in, into disarray. Uh, the idea of a restraining order in wrestling is ridiculous. The idea that a restraining order was broken in the, in the context of a match with a third party is ridiculous. And the fact that you are, you are pressing charges and having him arrested, but you're not doing that until next week is also a bit ridiculous. These guys are our characters above all else. LA Knight is going to get himself out of this, and I think they're going to, uh, if they do this right, uh, I think they can play this out to stand and deliver. Now, the uh, while we're talking about Stand and Deliver, which I'm going to talk about more in a bit, I do think it's friggin' crazy how they're setting up the um, the WrestleMania week. As as I know it right now, 
And yes, you guys are going to get previews from me on Stand and Deliver. You guys are going to get previews from me on WrestleMania. I'll get somebody on here with me. Hopefully we get Jake back soon. Guys, just uh, keep sending all your, your love and well wishes to Jake. I hope I get him back on here eventually, but we'll see how that goes. But... Apparently, WrestleMania weekend, and somebody can correct me down in the box below if I'm wrong, because I probably am. Apparently, we're getting SmackDown and the Hall of Fame in the same night. Apparently, we're getting midday, we're getting NXT Stand and Deliver, and then day one of WrestleMania. Next night, we're getting day two of WrestleMania, and then the next night, we're getting the Raw after WrestleMania. That's a lot. This is me. This is the... the the hard-boiled NXT fan. This is the NXT lifer. This is Spaz saying this to you. That's a lot. That's a lot of wrestling. Um, now, I think these guys, because of the characters, the way they are, I think they can separate briefly and come back just in time for Stand and Deliver, LA Knight and Grayson Waller on somewhat of a pay-per-view stage, I guess. I'd love to see... I'm curious to see, I should say, this version of NXT in a bigger building because they, they have to do that right they can't make this part of wrestlemania weekend and still do it out of the two-point dome uh that would be ridiculous so this this fireworks and unicorn farts version of nxt in a larger building is is going to be something to see but we will see when we get there when we get there uh i assume that there's going to be a lot of character I, I think this could be one of those comedy angles that spreads throughout the night grayson waller could show up with the cops and they're looking for la night all night long yeah um or it could be one prolonged talking segment that's just la night being like you're a fucking idiot get away from me uh either way it's good. Um, now, get, now getting on to the matches. Sorry, losing my voice, which is why I'm trying to get this out as quickly as I possibly can. Recording this on Thursday, you guys are probably going to see this Friday morning. Yes, I know the show isn't until next Tuesday, but we all do what we can do. The finals of the Dusty Classic MSK versus the Creed Brothers. Now, I want to say, first of all, because we're going to talk about the Women's Dusty Cup in a second, I do love the fact that they spread them out this year. Last year, when they introduced the Women's Dusty Cup and then they just did both tournaments at once, I, I hated that for a number of reasons, because nothing got to breathe. You had to push a bunch of the matches over into 205 Live, which nobody watches. I mean, numbers are dwindling for NXT. Is anybody watching 205 Live? Anybody. Is there anybody left on 205 Live? Somebody tell me, down in the box below, if you've watched 205 Live in the past, let's say, year, go in the box, down below, right now, tell me why. At Spaz Phoenix on Twitter, tell me why. The, uh, the fact that they are letting this uh, tournament run out until Vengeance Day, and potentially they could let the women's tournament run out until um, Stand and Deliver is a nice thing, because you've got tournament stories always on the go. MSK versus the Creed Brothers. MSK obviously are the tag team that came into old NXT as a precursor of what new NXT was going to be like. The Creed Brothers are the heavies of a much larger faction. Um, so, in a way, I want to look at this as MSK versus the Diamond Mine, because on their own, the Creed Brothers don't have much... Like, other than what they can do bell to bell, because they're great physical specimens in the ring and they can do things bell to bell... There's not much of a reason for me to give a shit about the Creed Brothers on their own. As part of Diamond Mine, backing up Roderick Strong, being mouthed off by uh, Malcolm Bivens, getting escorted to the ring by Ivy Nile. Now you've got a story. I like the Diamond Mine. I think it's a cool little unit. I think it's one of the few cool things that sort of transplanted from the old NXT just in time for the new NXT to happen, if that makes sense. On the other side of the coin, I really do like MSK. They sort of remind me of why I used to love the Hardy Boys. Let's not talk about the fact that the Hardy Boys are gonna, both going to be on Dynamite soon. <sighs> Anyways, we're talking about NXT. Let's just talk about the fact that Keith Lee just debuted on Dynamite the other night and uh, kicked, the, uh, kicked the hell out of... Who did he kick the hell out of? One of the guys from the Hardy family office. So good, good for him. He looks good. He looks like he's happy. That's awesome. I would love to see... <coughs> excuse me. I would love to see MSK go back-to-back. I think that's really cool, although with uh, Roderick Strong losing his championship in the Diamond Mine, the Diamond Mine could also really use a win. Now, the winner of the Dusty Final also gets a shot at the Tag Team Championships, which are currently held by Imperium. Imperium are heels, MSK are babyfaces, and we never really know what Diamond Mine are. So, 
I'm going to say MSK because on face value it makes more sense, and I would love them to have the titles back. But as I say, if the Creed brothers go on to win this and then win the championship, Malcolm Bivens can now brag about uh, managing champions again, which is also never a bad thing. So... There's a whole lot of reasons why both these teams could win. I'm going to pull it off the top of my head. I'm going to say MSK, but either way is not going to hurt my feelings. Now, briefly, looking forward into the Women's Dusty Classic, we've got Catanzaro and Carter, which is awesome. We've got Cora Jade uh, winning over, I guess, a partner in Raquel Gonzalez. And we've got Io Shirai with her new tag team partner replacing Zoe Stark, Kaylee Ray. Now... <coughs> I will say, um, Kaylee Ray had her shot at Mandy Rose and the Women's Championship last week. It was it was an all right match with a bullshit ending. Let's be real. Toxic Attraction are a thing. They're holding all the gold. It's all nice. It's all wonderful. Um, Shirai and Kaylee Ray is a really, really, really tasty team as an idea. I mean, Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez, you got the newbie and the not-so-newbie. You've got the speed person, the the young, speedy, smaller person, and the giant. Which, uh, Kat and Zara and Carter, you guys know I've loved for a long-ass time. I would love to see those girls with the belts eventually, but I don't think it's going to happen. Kaylee Ray is a badass. <coughs> Io Shirai is a badass and sort of holds a pretty high... A pretty high regard, a pretty high esteem with the NXT fans that have been watching, you know, since NXT was good. So early on, early days, uh, I know there's that Valentina Fuerza and the other one uh, that that are in this as well. I'd love to see a couple more get in there. I mean, Tiffany Stratton has got to find herself a tag team partner because Tiffany Stratton's awesome. Uh, Wendy Chu, who's the um, the better NXT version of Orange Cassidy, don't at me. Uh, needs to get herself a partner as well. I, I would love to see Wendy Chu and, and uh, what's her name? Saray. Because <coughs> Saray is now basically a Power Ranger, and Wendy Chu is asleep most of the time, which I can definitely relate to. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely some interesting teams to, to go into this. And I'll go ahead and say this right now, because I don't think the titles are changing at Vengeance Day. I think you throw uh, Indy Hartwell and Persia Prada into that mix as well. And you've got yourself a pretty decent tournament, and you can stretch it out if you don't do like back-to-back -back matches, back-to-back -back weeks. You can make it last out to NXT Vengeance Day. But that's another story for another day. Pete Dunn versus Tony D'Angelo in a weaponized cage match. Now, what do I say with this? How do I how do I avoid my biases here? I don't. I really, really want Pete Dunne to win this. Um, again, it comes down to, like, Pete Dunne is from old NXT, though. And the pattern since new NXT has come along is whoever is still around from old NXT is being used to put over new NXT. Look at... Kyle O'Reilly putting over Von Wagner on the way out. Look at Adam Cole putting over... I don't even remember who on the way out. Look at... Uh, whoever else isn't there anymore. Um, look at Ciampa, who sort of stepped back into, a, into sort of a side role, and we'll get into him later on as well. Roderick Strong is one of the few who's from old NXT and has found himself a spot in new NXT. So he's sort of the anomaly in the whole thing. I don't think the same uh, the same care is being taken with Pete Dunne. Quite frankly, Tony D'Angelo. Let me tell you about Tony D'Angelo. He's got the whole mobster, gangster, wannabe Sopranos gimmick going on. He's got the crowbar. That makes sense. They had to give Pete Dunne a weapon to, to fight his crowbar with. And he's from the UK, so let's give him a cricket bat. I mean, it was pretty cut and paste, but I like Pete Dunne breaking people's fingers, and if he's going to break people's fingers with a cricket bat, it's going to be fine. <coughs> when they uh, when they announced the weaponized cage match, when he just tossed everything in the ring and said, hey, why don't we bring some weapons into the cage, I thought that's going to be a lot of fun. I haven't seen a lot from Tony D'Angelo to make me think that he's a great bell-to-bell, five-star classic guy, but we did see him in War Games, and... Was it the best War Games? No. Was it clearly an agenda to put the new NXT over the old NXT? Yes. But they didn't fall on their faces either. So this leaves me 
with a lot of hope that this match could be really good. This is a cage match that's going to be broken up with a commercial break or something, is it not? So that's kind of a bummer. Um, that's the other thing that makes me not able to look at this as sort of a mini pay-per-view is that it's got the typical tropes of fitting between commercial breaks and what do we block out during the commercial break and all that type of thing. But I do think, on the whole, these guys are going to perform above expectation, but not very much above expectation, if that makes sense. I'm going to go with my biases here. Check it off your Spaz Phoenix bucket list. The uh, former Destiny World Champion, former NXT UK Champion, Pete Dunne is taking this if they know what they're doing. I'm looking forward to what might be the match of the night, which might be one of the... Uh, Along with Solo Sokoa, one of the guys that I'm enjoying the most right now in NXT is Carmelo Hayes. He's defending the North American Championship against Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes is nowhere near as obnoxious as he was when he first came in, or I don't find him to be as obnoxious as he was when he first came in. One or the other. Um, Cameron Grimes sort of has a cult following. He's developed himself a bit of strong following and a bit of sympathy at the same time like you can be like somebody that's on a tear and because you're on a tear people follow you or you can have somebody that's fallen down on their luck and because of that people are behind you because of sympathy cameron grimes for the crowd that's there has somehow managed to develop both like he has a little bit of sympathy a little bit of familiarity with the crowd as you would with somebody that you feel bad for but also people want him to be on the tear they want him to say it with me say it loud say it proud they want him to go to the moon um carmelo hayes though is <laughs> is a fucking superstar his second match in the company was against adam cole baby uh and and he sort of walked into those shoes and and, and fit on the night, and I'm um, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna take anything away from him. I I like Cameron Grimes. I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to get a lot of satisfaction out of him picking up his first title. Looking at somebody like Adam Wilborn from What Culture, in particular, just because he wants to do a problematic impression, that's fine. Uh, Carmelo Hayes is a great champion. Carmelo Hayes, they need to spend more of the show on him and what he's doing, and have him have a couple more bangers and get him up to that. Not. I don't want to say he's going to be the next Adam Cole, but like treat him like that kind of star, and he will eventually get there. And Trick Williams being there as his heater, as his hype man, it always it always is a good time. You know what else is a good time? You know what else is a really, really fucking good time? Is Gigi Dolan, JC Jane taking on Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada. Now, I said this last time, I said this last time we were talking about a uh, pay-per-view and, ta and tag team wrestling in general. I really do think it's cool that we went from Indy Hartwell being the protege to Candice LeRae to now she's the established person and she's brought her friend along with her. I think that's a really cool story. I don't think they've hit that story on the head too much, but but it is definitely a thing. The way just kind of disappeared. Gargano's in Gargano land and Candice is about to have a kid and Dexter is shagging Indy Hartwell in storyline and Austin Theory is hanging out with Vince on Raw with the egg. So there's no way they're winning this. There's absolutely no way they're winning this because they want to keep Toxic Attraction strong. And I want to make the comparison here. Toxic Attraction is the bloodline of NXT. And I don't mean that they're on the same level as the Usos and Roman Reigns. I don't mean that whatsoever. But it doesn't... Neither of them individually holding a title is as important as the three of them together being able to say that they have all the gold. Uh, that's, that's how I'm comparing... That's how I'm comparing them to the to the bloodline. Roman Reigns is the champion. Usos are the tag team champions. And each is boosted up by the other. Mandy Rose, who's finally getting the credit that she deserves. I'm sorry, the main roster fucked with her just as much as NXT did the first time around. Finally holding a title isn't as impactful as her holding a title and her greatness rubbing off on two other people who've also managed to get titles while following her. And them holding the tag team titles isn't as impressive as them holding tag team titles while they follow the champion. The three of them, as a unit, are, are champions. And I think leading into a much bigger show like Stand and Deliver, I think they're going to want to keep that unit strong. Because whether you like it, whether you not, yes, they're hot chicks are allowed to have success on a wrestling show. I shouldn't have to say that. This unit is going strong in the stand and deliver. I don't know who they're defending against. They're going to be defending against whoever wins the, the Women's Dusty Cup, obviously, and they're going to find somebody awesome, hopefully, for Mandy Rose to defend against. But I don't think they're taking any, any of the gold off of this team 
at all in the slightest and that's that's really good and as i say Andy Hartwell, Persia Parada are going to get themselves right back in the mix. They're going to fill out one of the brackets on the Dusty Classic. It's going to be them, along with Catanzaro and Carter, along with Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez, along with Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray, and that's going to make for a freaking awesome tournament. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be good. Everybody wins. Everybody wins even if they lose. Speaking of everybody wins even when they lose, Braun Breaker is going to beat Santos Escobar, and that's fine. Uh, Santos Escobar is, again, al along with Legado del Fantasma, is one of the few remnants that has sort of found a way to survive in new NXT, mostly because of, uh, what's her name, Electro Lopez. Uh, they got themselves a bit of eye candy in Legado del Fantasma, which is absolutely fine. Santos Escobar is great. Santos Escobar is stepping up to Braun Breaker and just saying, like, yeah, give me a title shot, is... It's believable because he's such a cocky asshole, but it's so calm and so, like, I'm not putting this on. I'm just going to beat you. And Braun Breaker, with his weird Steiner ecstatic energy, is absolutely great because he looks like, as much as, as Santos Escobar is going to sit there and pop his mouth off and, and have his boys behind him and get, get a couple one-ups on the champion before the night, he's going to go in there and wreck everybody and he's going to save the champion because the minute NXT 2.0 rolled out you could see here's the guy they started the first episode of NXT 2.0 with him introducing himself to Tommaso Ciampa so and Tommaso Ciampa was the champion at the time if I'm not mistaken or if I fucked that up totally um so Braun Breaker is the project which is fine that's absolutely fine. Braun Breaker is the project. Santos Escobar is the legitimate guy, sort of left over from old NXT, sort of finding his way in new NXT as well. Um, it's going to be a good match. It's going to be a very, very interesting clash of styles. The, uh, the Lucha style versus the uh, sort of the meathead jock style of, uh, of uh, Braun Breaker. It's going to be a fun, interesting match. But... I do have to say, the more fun thing is going to be the extraneous stuff on the outside because there was the championship summit on last week's episode of NXT between um, between Santos Escobar and Braun Breaker, and it was interrupted not only by Tommaso Ciampa, but by Monday Night Raw's Dolph Ziggler. Now, Dolph Ziggler is one of the few, and it's it's sort of underlined by the fact that he's tag teaming with with Bobby Roode right now on Raw when they remember that they have them on the roster. Dolph Ziggler is one of those people that even when NXT was good, and I hate to keep saying it like that, but it's true. Um, Charlotte made her return to NXT, and nobody liked it because you're not allowed if you're female in WWE, you're not allowed to be white and blonde. We know that's a rule, that's fine. But when Finn Balor came back and had his Prince Devitt run in NXT. It was good because he was having a bit of a homecoming and <clears throat> and um, he was having a bit of a second run. He was breathing new life into himself. I always said, or one of the things that I said was if you want to do that with some people that never had a chance to be in NXT, you'd have to be really careful how you did it because you couldn't do, you couldn't bring Randy Orton to NXT. You couldn't bring a John Cena to WWE. You couldn't, you know, dredge up Goldberg and send Goldberg or Brock Lesnar to NXT. But there's two guys that you could send to NXT because they never had the chance to be in NXT. And one of them is AJ Styles, and we saw that, and it was good. The other one was Dolph Ziggler because Dolph Ziggler got received like manna from heaven when he showed up on NXT, and it was fucking great to see. He immediately made himself into a dickhead, immediately played off as the I'm the main roster guy, like dragging my heels in this mud on NXT. I guess I have to work Tuesdays now. But he was then interrupted by Tommaso Ciampa, which was even more interesting because the two of them sat face to face, and the two of them... Uh, made implications of of potentially having a match, which I think is is very it's very interesting on this new NXT to have somebody from the old NXT and somebody that was never in NXT go head to head is a very different it's a very different dichotomy if uh, if if I can be honest. Ziggler versus Ciampa is going to happen sometime between now and Stand and Deliver. It is. Um, 
Braun Breaker is going to defend his championship at Vengeance Day against Santos Escobar, and then Santos Escobar is going to go off and 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 find something else to do, <coughs> which is fine. Santos Escobar versus Carmelo Hayes at some point for that North American Championship is something I would absolutely love to see. Somehow or other, we are going to get Dolph Ziggler versus Braun Breaker at Stand and Deliver. I'm saying that right now. If I'm wrong, when by the time we get there, you can come back to this video and you can tell me that I'm wrong. You can admonish me on Twitter, like I say, at Spaz Phoenix. Um, Ciampa versus Ziggler is a very interesting match, but you can't look at that match and not presume that it's going to be a number one contenders match for Stand and Deliver. Um... The end game has to be Braun Breaker versus Dolph Ziggler at Stand and Deliver, which, again, is something, it's so bizarre and it's so weird that I have to see it now. If, if, that, if that makes any sense whatsoever, I have to see it now. It would be like Toxic Attraction getting challenged at Stand and Deliver by the Bellas, which would send everybody into a frenzy. I know. Now, the other thing, the other way we can go with this is just the pile of people route, where we get to stand and deliver, and the match for the championship is Braun Breaker, Santos Escobar, Tommaso Ciampa, and Dolph Ziggler. Let me tell you, I, that wouldn't hurt my feelings either, but uh, I don't think it'll happen. I think Braun Breaker would use Ziggler as a stepping point, if nothing else, sort of like... Roman Reigns, I expect, is going to do with Goldberg in a couple of weeks at uh, Elimination Chamber. But the idea of Dolph Ziggler coming to NXT to hold the NXT Championship opens a lot of creative doors. And as I said, the way that Finn Balor came back to NXT to sort of reinvigorate his career because they weren't using him on, well on the main roster... To try and do that for somebody on the main roster who never had the chance to be in NXT but nevertheless is being misused on the main roster right now is a very, very interesting prospect, especially when you consider the, the realistic ramifications behind it. Raw and NXT are both on USA Network. The ratings for NXT are in the toilet. You want to have... You want to have the uh, the resurgence and the redemption of Dolph Ziggler, who everybody knows is great and has been used like shit for years, and tell that story on NXT and make that the driving force, like, say, after WrestleMania for, like, the next six months till we get to SummerSlam time. That's not the worst thing in the world. Now, do I think any of that is going to happen? No, I think he's doing a brief stint like AJ Styles did. But this is what they could do. This is why... I should be working there. This is why Vince needs to go to the home, and this is why Spaz needs to take over NXT. But, anyways, so for the few of you out there that are watching, for the few of you out there that are listening to the sound of my voice, for the few of you out there that are actually still following NXT and give a crap about next week's show, please, 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 not only share this video, but tell me down in the box below or on Twitter, at Spaz Phoenix. Let me know what you guys are thinking about, about this show. Let me know if there's anything else super interesting about NXT that you think I've missed touching on here, because I don't know when the next time I'm going to be talking about NXT is. Uh, but for right now, as I say, I'm kind of losing my voice, if you can't tell. Also very tired. It's almost the end of the week. It's Thursday, which means it's Friday Eve. So I'm going to call it a night. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, tagging out. Bye, guys.